Now we're rolling. Blake will ruling alongside Jason Laporte. The Monday following an incredible Challenger series down in Orem this past weekend. Jason, how you doing, man? Good, man. I think both of our voices are still a little shot from all the screaming and yelling we were doing on Saturday night. Dude, no doubt about it. And for anyone who's wondering, we're going to try to get the pay-per-view up as quickly as possible. We are trying to figure out we had a lot of mishaps on the broadcast due to the internet and things like that. So we're trying to get that all figured out and worked out. Um, but we will continue to work on that and hopefully have the pay-per-view up as soon as possible on our website. But man, Jason, this was a great night of fights. Nine finishes, even the decision, the first one here, Landon Dodge versus Chris Folau was so good. Every single fight delivered beyond expectation for me. Yeah, it, it's one of those ones that you wouldn't know watching it if they didn't say what these guys' records were, the fighters' records were. You wouldn't know that seven out of the, the seven guys were making their their debuts. And a couple, what, what, how many did we have that were that had only had one fight? A, a couple of those guys only had had one fight under their belt. Seven debuts, and then we had let's see, we had a couple. Yeah, we had a couple that only had one fight. I think Cross Hughes was the main one. Yeah, had all had one fight, but. Dude, and everybody looked, they looked like they had been training. They looked like they have been in, you know, four or five fights in the cage. It was a great night. Yeah, I was talking to, I think it was Steve Farragher. And he was just like, yeah. he's like, I cannot believe these guys are debuters. He's like, I cannot believe it. Like, like back to back to back. It was just, it was crazy. Every single one of them just looks so good. And that's like kind of the scary thing or not necessarily the scary thing, but the exciting thing about MMA is it just seems like the kids are just getting better and better, not kids, but the fighters are just getting better and better every single time um, we have these shows. And so it's, it's super, super fun. Even when I started calling fights two, three years ago, it, I mean, the, the debuting scene is so much more competitive now than it ever was. So what a blast, but we're going to kick things off. We're going to talk about Landon Dodge, Chris Falau, Landon Dodge, getting the unanimous decision win over Chris Falau, but, but no slack on Chris. He looked fantastic as well. He did look fantastic. I mean, Dodge, you know, he, he pretty much controlled the fight, but Falau did, he did a lot of good things. He got out of a lot of bad positions. Um, he was taking some, taking some damage, but didn't look like he was too, too hurt. A um, lot of potential I, I see from, from both guys, but Dodge, man, he, he, he had that jujitsu in his back pocket and he used it. He he got that heavy pressure on top and just pretty much controlled the fight from, from start to finish. Yeah, no. And that was a great way to kind of start the night. It was very technical. It was an exciting fight. It was kind of all over the place. There was striking, there was grappling, but like you said, Landon Dodge, his top pressure was, was most definitely his bread and butter. Um, Eric Iman kept saying on the broadcast, he's like, that kid also for sure has some wrestling. I'll have to figure that out whenever if he, if he decides to fight again with us. I thought he did for some reason. I think I even mentioned it on the, the broadcast. I thought for some reason that you had mentioned that he had it because he kept going for those takedowns and you could just, you could just tell the way he was using his hips and his pressure. Um, yeah. I, I felt like he uh, felt like he had some wrestling. Can, can I also say Landon Dodge is just a, a very large human being. He is at weight. He flexed. Yeah. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, that guy's massive. I yeah, he's, a, he's a big kid, man. I, you know, what was awesome was after the, after the fight, the two corners, uh, Steve Urgel and, um, uh, Ruiz, Julian Ruiz and those guys were, were kind of, kind of going back and forth. Like, why didn't you want to stand? <laughs> Urgel's like, hell no, we didn't want to stand with that kid. We saw what he, we saw what he was throwing. So that was pretty cool to see those guys interacting in a fun way. No, it was a blast. That was such a great way to kick off the night. This second one, a little bit of a faster fight, but still all the oohs and ahs as the first. Braden Judd getting the win over Giovanni Guzman. Gio Guzman, I should say. Braden Judd looked really, really good. I don't know if he's going to be back. I know that he's kind of he's got some things going on in his life that that are going to kind of take him away from from Provo and stuff like that. But I mean, he looked really, really good. Yeah, it sounded like he still wanted to fight. He's going to. Uh going to be an army ranger i guess is what, what did he say army ranger he just said he was going to the army right i i can't remember exactly what go, it was i mean you got to go to the army first to make it to the rangers but you know what i mean yeah. i mean hey the way that kid looked throw that kid in our special forces <laughs> no that so was let's put that him was, in there man that was a great fight he was it was just a couple crisp shots and it was it was a 35 second knockout so you know not a yeah, whole lot quick but he didn't he say was, much on the mic too just he just want to fight and quick <laughs> Oh my goodness. And then um on top of that, it was it was, you know, back-to-back matchups between Agima and ninth IL BJJ. And 
you know, Aguima once again comes out victorious, but but Gio Guzman as well as Roger Ashley, some some really, really good good fighters coming out from over there in Vegas. So hope to have oh, yeah. them back. Gio Guzman, I actually got to talk to him a little bit uh after the show. Nice guy. Really, really nice. Or after Wayne's, I should say. Really, yeah. really nice guy. All right. We're gonna move over to the loudest and maybe the most hyped up fight of the night cross hughes versus leone tassi alatini um leone tassi alatini versus cross hughes this was a back and forth battle man it was a banger man and we had uh, hughes's whole family and friends were sitting behind us they had pictures of his face printed <laughs> out on on a piece of paper with sticks and they were going they were dumping chairs over it was they were going crazy but hughes man he looked impressive, man. He looked sharp. He was crisp. He was throwing that those jabs. His leg kicks were looking phenomenal. Um, Alatini, I thought he, I thought he did well too. Um, I wish he would have checked some of those leg kicks. I bet he's thinking about that this morning now. Oh, man. But uh, he he showed a lot of he showed a lot of good things. His striking was good. He was trying to get in there, but Cross was just just a little bit too much for him. It was it was such a good matchup. I mean, they were just trading back and forth and just near the end, although it seemed like Cross was maybe the more tired fighter, he also was able yeah. to dig a little bit more deep near the end and kind of put the onslaught on. And that's what led him to the TKO victory. But my goodness, I, I hope to see him both back as soon as humanly possible because they both look fantastic. Yeah, Alatini, his leg, that was pretty bruised up there, especially heading into the third round. Um, and then Cross was just, you know, he was he was really just going to work and like you said his his family his friends they were they were an awesome crowd man they brought such a pop and that was that was awesome so cross hughes i hope to see him back tassi alatini hope to see him back they were both super super fun one of the most exciting fights and and really just cross hughes just digging deep and 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 finding a way to win with just 10 seconds left in the fight or so so that was that was super super fun Talon Carvalho facing off against Chandler Stone. Three months of training for Talon Carvalho, and he does that, Jason. Wow, he looked like a beast. Yeah, Ramsey made sure to tell me. He's like, three months of training. He's like, I thought it was six, but it's only three. Wow, that was impressive because Chandler Stone is no slouch, man. Like, the guy's got a lot of potential. He just – it just didn't work out for him that night. Um, yeah. Carvalho was just a freight train. He brought it. Yeah, he looks good, man. The future is bright. This all these guys, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, seriously, I'm thinking of the these winners. I mean, Talon Carvalho looked unbelievable. Cross Hughes had an amazing performance. Braden, I, like every single one of these debuters looked incredible. Not Cross Hughes being a debuter, but still. Well, and Stone is that was his second fight, right? He's second Owen, fight. Owen his first now? was against McNaughton. But he he doesn't look like an 0 and 2 fight. He doesn't look like a guy that's lost two fights if you see no. him in there. Like no. I, He's a scary 0-2 guy for the whoever fights him next because, yeah, that's a, that's a scary kid coming into his third fight. No, it was funny because we were talking – I was talking with Zach, and it was like, you know, Talon Carvalho took this fight. Not a lot of people wanted to fight Chandler Stone because they knew that he was tough. And, I, you know, when you, when you have someone like Talon Carvalho, Talon Carvalho is like the face of like you don't know what you're getting yourself into when you face an 0-1 guy, let alone like – I'll be completely honest. Like if I were, if I were in those shoes and I hear, Oh, I'm fighting a guy who's been training for three months and, you know, has one jujitsu tournament under his belt. I think to myself, Oh, you know, I don't have all that much to worry about. You know, they're going to be pretty yeah. green. You know, I'm coming into my second fight. This should be a good matchup. And Talon Carvalho just didn't, he didn't look anything like a fighter who's no. been fighting three months. It was incredible. Scary, scary, man. Yeah. Stone. If, if I remember right. And I think I said it on the broadcast, um, I, I I don't want to I hate to try to critique these guys because I've obviously never been in the cage. It's just something that I observed. He he was I felt like he was trying to go for those leg locks uh, or, or a heel hook, and as soon as he went for it, that's when he got caught um, with one of those shots. I just I I felt like he made a slight mistake trying to go for that heel hook. Maybe he thought he had it. I don't know, but um, I felt like he made a slight mistake going for that there with with Carvajal just having so much aggression at that point. Yeah, I mean, and that that really was the adjective to describe this fight specifically for Talon was he was just he was fearless in there. He was just yeah, he, he was. was just absolutely fearless. And and for Chandler Stone again, like you you learn and you grow. And you know it was a quicker turnaround for him going into his second fight. But 
I think he learns more in this one, and I think he'll be more prepared for a third if he chooses to do so. So yeah. spe- speaking of that, activity-wise, Brendan Myers, third fight in seven months, and he looks absolutely fantastic. The best performance of his career so far. He finally gets that submission that he has oh so wanted for quite some time over Chase Barrett. Man, I, th- this was a really, really fun fight, and, and for Brendan, a-, a satisfying one, seeing him grow every single time he's made that walk. We are we are very privileged, you and I, to be able to sit behind there and watch these guys fight after fight progress in their careers and, and get better and better. I, I every time I every time I get done, I think, man, I I look at guys like Myers that we've watched, uh, Novacell, uh, Mina, you know, um, Hector Lopez, who we're going to talk about later. All these guys that we've watched fight multiple times, just getting better and better. It's it's I love it, man. You could see these guys, the smile on Brendan's face. I mean, he's just thrilled all night and he put on a phenomenal performance yeah and and for chase barrett i mean like no slouch on him like he he was facing a tough tough matchup someone with two fights already making your debut against him like that's a difficult you know task and he you know withheld as long as he could and and just kind of fell into something and you know i actually got the chance to text chase after the show yesterday he's in good spirits just a nice kid i i hope we have him back he's a kid yeah. yeah he's, what is he 19 years old 19 he's just, he's years just old. a kid it's just a baby man and he he got in there props to him for stepping in there against a guy that you know just a little bit more experience um that just brought it he'll he'll be back yeah. barrett will be back four years older two fights already under his belt been training consistently for years at this point i mean chase will yeah. be back and 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 he'll be all right and if he if he wants to and and for brendan yeah Man, I'm so proud of him. I mean, I, just to watch him go to go to two and one after kind of a disappointing way to get his first win against Tony, like to see yeah. him to see him back in there and, and do it the way that he did and finally get that submission. He has been fishing for that submission win for so long. He had a close one against Dietrich. He had a close one against Tony, and uh, he finally gets it with that rear naked choke early in round number one. So this next one, Jason, this might be up there for for new KO TKO of the year. Bane Varner over Brandon Burgess, both guys tough as nails. Bane Varner jumping up uh, a weight class and a half. Brandon Burgess coming down a uh, half a weight class to 195 pounds. It, this was really fun to watch. Yeah, this was one that I had highlighted to, be, to possibly be fight of the night. I thought maybe these guys were just banging out for three rounds and, and Varner just, I mean, when they were doing the, when they were standing apart from each other before Dave brought him into, into the center, Barner was just, he locked eyes and did not break eye contact with Brandon. And, and Brandon, I didn't see him making eye contact back at all either. Um, but yeah, Barner, man, I love that guy. I love watching him fight. He, he brings a lot of excitement into the cage. He's fun. Um, and a big overhand right that just connected, man, just, just brought the house brought the house down with that man that was that was that was impressive that was unreal that shot that he landed and Brandon looked good headed into that as well I mean both fighters were, were really connecting and and it was it was really nice and back and forth um and and then into the second minute of, of round number one Bane Bane landed that shot and I I gotta ask you I mean Bane is such a funny interesting guy what was it like interviewing him after that he was he was really intense Oh, he's so he was still you could tell he was still fired up. And hopefully you can edit out the part where I said he looks like George the Animal Steel so he doesn't kick my butt next time he fights. <laughs> no, he was Hey, that's no knock. I love George the Animal Steel growing up. But he was a bad he, he was like that. He's just like a berserker in the cage, man. He just he's relentless. Um yeah. yeah, that guy's a lot of fun, man. Let's get him back in there. Please. It, his first time with Fierce and man, after just the first one, I'm just like, dude, we got to get him back in there as you soon gotta as get possible. Him back. Oh yeah, C- can't be another two year layoff for him. He's four and one now. That's a pretty amateur record, man. That's a great. That's a really good amateur record. He might be. He might be hunting for a title here pretty soon. Here's the thing, though. 185. Andrew Mickelson holds that belt. If Andrew, if Andrew Mickelson is to move up to pro and and relinquish that belt, maybe we see Bane Varner in there for a middleweight tra- yeah. title. But it, you know, we'll have to see how that plays out. Another for big sure. one, Mina Yushar Wadi getting that first submission win, back to back wins for her and uh, her first finish since her debut, getting the win over Carly Lombardo in a fight that really was quite competitive, back and forth on the feet. Yeah, I don't think Mina expected her to to come forward like she did. Um, you know, I talked to I actually talked to Carly after after the fights, and she said, "Yeah, it was it was a great scrap." He's like, "She's like, usually girls don't 
stand with me and trade with me like that once they once they feel a couple shots and Mina did that she she ate a couple shots but her striking was good her footwork was phenomenal great head movement um and then she hits her with that straight right hand if I'm not mistaken it's the same right hand that she knocked her first opponent out with yeah yeah and and I talked to both of them after the fights too and I will say I mean it's a pretty incredible story I mean Mina headed into her last fight she was one and two dropping two in a row in kind of disappointing ways being finished in both of them and it was it was kind of a it, it was it was hard to watch because we know Mina we love Mina she's so sweet yeah. and so wonderful to be around but at the same time you know we see her lose these two fights and it's just like we we hope that you know her career can kind of pick up and you know she yeah. gets she gets the win over Mally a couple months ago and then she gets this this big win over Carly and gets the finish her first submission and it just seems like she's improving every single time she makes that walk it, she is even in her training you can, I can see it in her training over the last oh year or so she's been incorporating some jujitsu in there she's done a few tournaments you know so she's she's sharpening the tools and she's she's becoming a, becoming a complete MMA fighter her jiu-jitsu coach Reese was kind of was kind of messing with me after the fights and he was like he was like you always talk about how good of a striker Mina is but I mean she gets the submission here tonight what do you have to say about that Blake and I, yeah. I just had to apologize and say Reese you're doing a good job over there at Wasatch with these with these fighters I mean Nate really Reinhardt is. he looks so good grappling a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago I should say um but what a fantastic matchup that was between them two hope to see Carly Lombardo too she was so nice she was so great to talk to after the fight um as well tyler daniel over malachi novacell this is actually incorrect on tapology we're gonna have to get that fixed it's saying that malachi lost that fight he beat tyler daniel uh yeah. via submission in round number one and, and and the big thing here for me jason how, how tight is malachi's squeeze because when he, he when he slaps it on these last two fights as soon as you slap it on the the his opponent is tapping every single time it seems like I was talking to his dad um, after the fight, and he's like, I tell him to use his wrestling jujitsu every fight, but the kid just likes to bang. You don't see it very often because he usually just wants to stand and bang because that's who he is. He, I want to fight, but the kid has the wrestling. He has the jujitsu. Um, I think he knew taking this fight on short notice, um, which props to both guys because I, it is a short notice fight for Nova. So, but it's just, it's a short notice fight for, for Tyler as well, because yeah, Tyler's got exactly. a new opponent 10 days. So, Props to him, you know, for stepping in there against a guy with a lot more experience. Um, and 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 uh, Malachi did exactly what he needed to do: close the difference, late couple leg kicks, striking, gets inside, gets the body lock takedown, and then it was over from there. He looks so good, and I just can't wait to see what happens next. Seven and three now for Malachi Novozo, back to back wins. I mean, it looks like you know a title fight is probably eminent for the kid. He just he just continues to get better. 21 years old already 10 fights under his belt i mean i, I yeah. you, you just got to be proud of the kid yeah yeah that's that's pretty impressive man that i i like that kid a lot he's got a bright future all right my highlight of the night one of my favorite fights probably now in, in fierce fighting championship fierce challenger series history hector lopez climbs to six and three another three fight win streak under his belt and defeats adam frank for the fierce FC featherweight championship, amateur championship, Jason, this one is special to me on many, many different way in many different ways, but to see Hector Lopez have this win was, was, it was special. He's one of those guys that we saw make, make, making that comeback. And he's on the three fight win streak. Now we've watched him evolve every fight. And I think, I think after that last one, you saw his confidence really start to rise. He's like, okay, like, I don't think, you know, I, I I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here, but I, I don't think he realized when we saw him fight, you know, the uh, four fights ago, I don't think he really knew that he wanted to be a fighter, that he wanted to continue doing it. I think he just took the fight after the layoff. It, you know, he lost the fight, but then he came back and he won and he's like, oh, maybe I do want to do this. And then he wins again. And he's like, oh, OK, like you just saw that confidence just boom, boom, boom. And then to, to throw him in there against a guy like Adam Bronk, who. I mean, we talked about it on the broadcast. I got messages. You got messages. Zach got messages. The kid's going to – everybody said the kid's just going to roll through Hector. That was what we heard leading up to this fight, that Adam is, is – Hector is not on Adam's level. So he proved that, that, he, that he's definitely on his level. Yeah, it was – and it was such a good read by you. We were talking. We were kind of having a conversation as they were grappling 
on the broadcast and you just pointed and then you see Hector Lopez snatch up this guillotine and it was like, oh my gosh, that is so tight. And Adam Frank, he tapped and and that was it. But it was one of the most incredible fights I've ever seen considering all of that backstory of, you know, everyone was talking about Adam Frank. And on top of oh, that, yeah. I've called Adam's fights in the past. I remember his debut. He's... He jumps on your back. He doesn't come off. And he is so, so tough. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was not to interrupt you. I was just going to say, you know, he, he was relentless. Like he jumped right on Hector's back. He had that body triangle. It was tight. Hector said, he's like, man, that was tight. And he, he, Adam was doing all the right things. He he made a small mistake and left his neck out. I guarantee you that kid does not do that next fight. Mm -hmm. It's an amateur fight. Um, He made a small mistake. Hector just didn't let go. I would be willing to bet 99% of the time Adam gets out of that, you know, he just didn't get out of it with Hector this time. Hector Hector did the right things and he he finished him. That was just amazing, amazing. He's gonna head up to pro. I cannot wait to see what he looks like in the future. But I am so so proud of him. Uh, and Adam Frank, I I hope that that he continues on with his career and I hope he continues to do well. Um, but but what a co-main event we had. The main event, Octavian Trumbo versus Lehigh Dominguez. Jason, I just got to say, Octavian Trumbo is a problem, man. That guy He's is scary. terrifying. Who beat that kid? Who who beat that kid is what I want to know because holy crap, man! He came out. Too. He threw that kick and 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 then he got that Muay Thai clinch and that knee. I was like, oh man, this kid is just. And and I, you know, Lehigh even mentioned it in his in his in his post fight thing, and and then he made a post about it. He knew Octavian was going to come out with a, a lot of steam and a lot of pressure, and unfortunately. You know, he gets caught with a punch and ends up falling, you know, and breaking his ankle. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, obviously sad to see. I, I would have liked to have seen if he could have continued, you know, if he, if that had not occurred. But shout out to Trumbo, man. I would not want to fight that kid. No, he's he's unbelievable. And and I, there was kind of some rumblings online of, you know, make sure that we give Octavian his flowers and make sure that we also respectfully, you know, m- let it be known that Lehigh broke his ankle. Both both sides of that story are true. Octavian Trumbo, he was putting on an onslaught headed into that headed into when Lehigh did break his ankle. I mean, Octavian Trumbo is is a scary, scary human being. But on top of that, Lehigh did break his ankle. Go ahead. He did break his ankle, but Trumbull did connect with that left hand to make him to have him fall down. I don't know if Le- Lehigh was was out. We couldn't see it, but watching that replay, you could see he connected with the left and the right as as Lehigh's falling down. Unfortunately, he falls over his ankle. Um, but yeah, Trumbull and just a ton of pressure, just pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, he's he's scary, man. He's scary. I, I don't know who we match him up with if he wants to come back, but. That is that is a scary man out of Las Vegas. I, my goodness, he is tough. He is absolutely tough. But on top of that, Lehigh Dominguez retiring after the fight. I mean, he was he's a legend in the Utah MMA scene. He's been around for quite some time. Thirty eight years of age, uh, tons of fights, and he's been a pleasure to watch and call his fights over the years. Oh yeah, he's he's a ton of fun. He's fun to interview. He's fun to talk to. He's always upbeat. He's always positive. You know, Father Time, man. It it catches up to all of us. And, and MMA, jujitsu, it's not a it's not an old man sport. <laughs> no, it is it's, not. It's not for somebody. You start to creep up to forty, your body just it just doesn't act the same. And you got guys that are coming up. These, you know, the Adam Franks, the uh, uh, Brandon Myers. You got guys like that that are that are coming up. And it's like, man, these guys are just. They're just on another level nowadays. They're so good. They're so good. Jason, I'm just going to kick or I'm going to close things off. I just got to say thank you to Eric Iman, who we got the the chance to call the fights with. He was incredible as always. I just, I I love him in the broadcast booth with us. I love his insight. I love the way he breaks down fights. Um, Obviously we've had other fighters on there before and they've all done great. Joel's great. Caitlin's great. Um, Er Eric is, Eric is amazing, man. Love having him there with us. He's amazing. I cannot wait for June 24th, man. That is going to be Ooh. such a good card. Oh, I just see that. Uh, I was just looking online. Can, can, oh, we were about ready to finish, but um, yeah, that's going to be a banging card. Kent Mofaleo and uh, Rudy Schaefer. Yeah, cannot wait for it. All right, Jason, appreciate the time. All right, brother. Appreciate it, man. We'll see you June 24th.